Welcome back, everyone. Next, we have Giftify, Inc. trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol GIFT and is a pioneer in the incentive and rewards industry with a focus on retail, dining, and entertainment experiences. As the owner and operator of leading digital platforms, cardcash.com and restaurant.com, please welcome its CFO, Steve Handy. Welcome to the conference today, Steve. Thank you. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may be. Um, so just to clear up any confusion out there, you might see some references to RDE versus Giftify Inc. Giftify just had a name, well, RDE just had a gift uh, name change to Giftify that became effective this Monday. The ticker symbol is GIFT and the company has two digital platforms. One is restaurant.com, which offers great value for restaurants, for consumers, diners. And then you have Card Cash, which is the leading secondary exchange for gift cards. Um, from a revenue standpoint, Card cash is about 70%, 70, I'm sorry, about 97% of our revenue and uh, restaurant.com is 3%. A uh, little background, we just acquired cardcash.com the last day, last business day of last fiscal year, uh, December 30th. And so we'll go here to the next one. It's a forward looking statement. And then the company snapshot here, you can take a look, you see the name, the ticker symbol, uh, the market cap about 40 million. You had a kind of a volatile trading range, 50 cents to 465. We just uplisted from the OTC QB to NASDAQ. That was a clean uplist, no reverse split. And, you know, we we're hovering around 90 million market cap for a while. We're down to 40 now. Uh, our shares, average daily shares are ticking upwards says here at 20, 28,000 is now at 31,000 average. And we have revenues for the six month period about 42 million and cash about 4.8 million. Uh, we have a burn, kind of adjusted EBITDA burn for the first six months of a million, uh, which 350,000 was in the second quarter of this year. So de decreasing over the prior year or the prior quarter. And then insider ownership is 20%. I'll end that with, uh, we have a little bit of debt too, about 2.2 million. We have a, an acquisition note of a million and a half that's uh, paid over a two year period. The first payment coming up this December and then the following payment, both 750,000 of, of the next uh, December 31 period end. And then we have an, uh, you know, an EIDL loan, which is, you know, kind of the COVID loan. Um, that's a 30 year loan, very low interest rate. And so, uh, you know, those, those two comprise our debt. Uh, the investment highlights of this company is that it has a large and growing addressable market. Uh, but even so, even with that, they're also economic and refreshing, uh, recession proof. And so, you know, we're offering great discounts to consumers, to diners. And so with that, in a time of recession, people pinch pennies. Uh, we have a solution for that and uh, we drive value for the consumer while also driving value to the businesses that uh, and retailers by driving customers to them. We have patented technology, uh, card cash and restaurant.com have both been working on their IT and their IP for many years. They got it honed in. It's very, uh, you know, ease of use focused um, and um, you know, drives great consumer experience when they're using our platforms. Uh, we have multiple levers to accelerate growth. We have cross-selling now between the two platforms. Uh, we certainly can move into more retailers and more restaurants. And then we have a robust pipeline of potential strategic or complementary acquisitions. And what that really means at the end of the day is we're in the incentive space. And so there's a lot of incentive players, corporate incentives, individual incentives. And uh, there's an opportunity there to roll them up. Uh, the ones that are strategic and uh, attractive to us, and if that makes sense at the time. So our vision is to be the premier online platform uh, for discounted gift cards and promotional offers. You know, the value we drive is both to the consumer and the businesses and merchants. Uh, one from kind of the seamless ability to do transactions on your phone in real time, uh, that benefits both the discount to the consumer, but also helps the merchant and derives business into those merchant facilities. And then we have, you know, that's going to drive continued growth as we integrate these two businesses. So I'll talk a little bit more about card cash. Again, we are the leading 
secondary gift card company in the United States. Um, you know, our combined revenue with the acquisition is 41.5 million for the six month period. Again, 97% of that is card cash. We are now driving kind of unprecedented savings. We talked about adjusted EBITDA coming down uh, from a loss perspective in the second quarter over the first. We're you know eliminating costs, we're enhancing products, we're you know implementing IT improvements to eliminate uh, kind of repetitive costs within the organization. And with that, uh, we're improving the customer experience. And if you haven't had a chance to download the Card Cash app and use it, uh, I highly recommend it. I think you'd be highly impressed. Go into a Starbucks, download it, get your savings immediately, use it at the register uh, real time. So it's quite, it's really impressive. And with all that and our ability to do other things with the, with the gift cards, we can drive traffic to, you know, the 500 plus retailers that we have on the platform. So we'll talk about this real quick and I'll get into it real quick. And there's a picture of what the kind of the app looks like. You see that uh, it tells you how much discount you get off uh, whatever card you're getting, the value of that card. Um, and so we have proprietary tech. We have, you know, heavy investment in fraud prevention. Obviously there's fraud related to this business um, in this industry. And so we've been very successful in building that out and stopping that from happening. Our fraud rate is extremely low. And so uh, we're happy with that achievement. Um, and then we obviously have some, you know, with all our know-how, you know, digital payments have become a very strong thing of ours as well. So real-time purchasing, spending, um, you can see the retailers on the right side. That's just a snippet of, you know, 500 plus blue chip retailers that we have. We're selective on who those retailers are. Uh, we've known through the years of data collection and analysis on who and what cards are going to move rather quickly. And so, uh, you know, we've been very successful in kind of making sure we get the right cards that are going to turn over quickly. Our, I think our average days of inventory turn are around 13. So uh, it's, you know, that's a quick turn. Uh, we don't have a lot of old inventory around that's going to expire. Um, so people buy immediate digital delivery. They can use those cards right away. Uh, and they go ahead and get, uh, you know, nice savings. And by the way, our consumer base is very sticky. Uh, once they get on the platform, once they've tried it, once they like it, uh, they stay around, they keep using it. They see that there's more and more merchants. And so, uh, you know, we have a high repetitive use rate and uh, we don't lose a whole lot of customers along the way. And then the revenue model is, you know, simply kind of comes from two things. We have bulk buyers and bulk sellers. That's kind of the B2B side. And then we have the individual sellers and the individual buyers. It's the B2C side. Um, these you know people come in, use our platform, our API. Um, they're able to transact, sell any gift cards they don't want to sell, you don't want to use. They have no purpose for them. They can trade them. And then there's sellers that come in and immediately get discounts and use them uh, on the spot at any retail location that they uh, relate to that card. So I'm gonna give you a quick example. It's rather simple. Um, you know, this one talks about Sarah buying or receives a hundred dollar gift card from whoever. She doesn't uh, necessarily want it. She goes ahead and sells it to Card Cash through their API on their phone for eighty-one dollars. We go through a number of checks to make sure that card is valid, uh, the balances are valid, and uh, you know, make sure it's not fraudulent. And then it goes into our inventory. At that point, someone can come in, they can buy it off our API or app uh, for, you know, we'll sell it to them for $90, getting the $9 margin. So a lot of transactions. And then uh, he goes ahead and fulfills it right away. He bought it for 90. Uh, he has a hundred dollar value. He saves 10. And fraud fix, which, you know, there's a lot of tools out there at the end of the day. Um, we have developed a tool that is being used and licensed to Hotels.com, CBS, and others. You see it down below on the slide, on the computer screen there. And you know that's just reflective of the value that we have in this tool. Uh, we take it serious. You know, We've developed it over the years. We have 165 parameters we check right away within a second or two of an order being placed and make sure that card's valid. Um, and that's you know, driving a lot of value to the bottom line for us. Uh, fraud fix is just another 
kind of quick intro on what it does here. You know, send your orders to our API. This is somebody coming online to our app, uh, ordering your card. Um, uh, I'm sorry, selling our card. And then we, you know, we capture 182, 100, whatever that number was, a lot of data points on the person and the card. We make sure that it, it goes through our system as either, you know, safe, unsafe, or fraud. And very rarely we may go on to kind of a human interaction to make sure it's manually, manually reviewed, but most of the time uh, it goes right through or it's kicked out. And if it's kicked out, uh, you know, we don't entertain it. And so the company as a whole, uh, formerly private, uh, now with us, uh, as of the end of last year, sold over $1 billion of gift cards since 2014. It's served 420,000 consumers. Um, and then you talked down there about the average days. I think what's important here is um, we're talking about growth. And for growth, card cash is not well known. Uh, card cash is generating 80 plus million dollars a year. True, uh, it has a lot of B2B and B2C, uh, but the younger generation um, and a lot of other just general consumers do not know of this. Um, and so we're gonna be promoting that, we're gonna be advertising it and building that brand. And I think with the cross-selling of the restaurant.com customers, which we have you know, millions and millions of uh, emails and users over the years, you know, we're gonna start pushing it that way. But I think once you know, people start becoming aware of how, many, how much savings they can have on this platform on a day-to-day -day basis, I think it's gonna take off quite a bit. It's a very large market. And a lot of people have unused gift cards laying around. They have no idea what to do with them. Uh, they can now sell them, uh, they can monetize them, they can exchange them. I think it's going to be uh, a big growth driver for us. And then there's some statistics here for you to look over when you get some time. Um, you know, there's, it just talks about, you know, roughly 50% of retailers have gift cards. Um, the number of consumers, 46, who have bought them uh, in 2020, which is 46%. Uh, and... You know, it just goes on and on, but uh, there's a lot of breakage too, a lot of lost cards, a lot of cards that are stuck in people's drawers uh, that they can definitely uh, now uh, monetize or exchange and put that into the retailers. So the other growth opportunities is yes, we have B2B and B2C, that's kind of on the left side, but we are also working on kind of a branded exchange. And so the way I think about this, or you should think about this is, you know, you're gonna go into uh, let's say a Nordstrom's, um, and you have a, I don't know, you can, any, any other gift card out there that, uh, you may not want. It could be a, a Walmart, a Walmart, let's say. So you go into Nordstrom's, you have a Walmart gift card. You can go to that retailer. They have a POS checkout where you can exchange the Walmart gift card for Nordstrom's card and automatically purchase whatever, uh, you know, apparel you're buying, um, at a discount. And so it kind of becomes kind of a fungible, um, uh, digital, sorry, uh, platform for people to start using and uh, you can start monetizing all your cards at all these merchants. I think that unlo unloads a lot of value. So restaurant.com, uh, restaurant.com is a little, little different. It's both a B2B and a B2C. It both, you know, both these platforms drive value for both the consumer and who they're serving from a, a merchant or, you know, a restaurant side. Um, in this case, you know, the model's a little bit different. Uh, you can go onto the site, which I think you'll like if you see it, um, check it out, great URL. A lot of consumers over the years. Um, and, you know, here you're gonna go ahead and buy a coupon, a, a certificate per se, uh, say $5 off on a 10. So you buy it for five, you get $10 off. We keep the full five, there is no rev share. And so it's a very high margin business. We generate margins around 90% on this line of our business. And then on card cash, it's about 14%. So talk about competitive advantages here. You know, no discounting the URL name. Restaurant.com is very powerful. We have 650,000 monthly visitors. We have 6 million mobile downloads and 8 million marketable consumers. Uh, we have B2B partnerships, something like T-Mobile. We'll go ahead and you know, issue our restaurant.com uh, gift cards 
to all the uh, you know, all their customers out there that are you know in some kind of promotional period, and so they'll get a gift card, and the, that customer can go ahead and use the gift card. They buy those gift cards off us. Uh, it's, it's almost pure margin, and so it's very very advantageous to us as well. Uh, very large TAM, uh, you know, million restaurants in the U.S. Uh, you got a lot of uh, smaller, uh, you know, restaurants, obviously local and independent, twenty thousand or so, and uh, another three hundred fifteen thousand full service restaurants uh, that are not part of the national chains. So a very large market. And then the metrics are right here. We talked about them a little bit in the beginning. Uh, revenues, albeit they're down a little bit. Uh, but that's on purpose. Uh, the purpose is to focus on the quality of earnings, the quality of margin. Uh, again, uh, Cardcast being the leader of the revenue between the two. But you can see here, while our revenue has gone down, our gross profit has actually gone up. And so that just talks to the quality of the product that we're offering to the consumer, the margins that we're driving up. Um, and you know, ultimately, we're, just, we're eyeing down profitability uh, next year. And that's it. And I'm happy, happy to take any questions. Wonderful. Steve, thank you. We do have some questions for you. Uh, Drake asks, are you paid by the merchant on a percentage of sales or not? How exactly does that work? Now, it's just in the model that we talked about. This, it's about the arbitrage the, on card cash. It's about the arbitrage about uh, you know the discount. We're buying the cards off the consumer and the amount we're selling it to the person buying those cards from us. Simple as that. There is no rev share. Right. Uh, strict, strict, you know, strictly the, the difference between what we buy it and what we sell it. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, Jay asks, what data do you collect? And do you know if consumers are repeat customers and at the same or higher rates? So we collect data from the retailer, the card issuer, uh, the purchaser, the banks behind the card um, and all sorts of other types of data points just to make sure, you know, I'm not sure what all 100 and plus data points are, but they're quite significant. And whatever they are touching over the years, uh, you know, they've been able to significantly reduce fraud rates. <clears throat> so the customers, we absolutely know uh, whether they're sticky or not, and they are. Um, you know, we don't put out what the actual, you know, retention rate is on our consumers, but, uh, you know, it's high. Because anytime you're going to use our platform and you're able to save three, four, five bucks a pop, let's say at a Starbucks, and then you go down the, you know, down the street and you're going to do some retail shopping, and you're able to save six, seven, eight, nine dollars there. Uh, all this starts to add up quite a bit. And so anytime they're going to go out and they're taking a look at the app to see what it is they can save on. So. And Carson wants to know, where is the growth in terms of revenue? Is it by adding more consumers? Is it by adding more merchants? Explain that. It's all of the above. Uh, I think, you know, CFO here, relatively new. Um, I think that um, Giftify, you know, is a great name. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cater to the younger generation. It's going to be, uh, you know, you can come almost game these two platforms uh, for the younger generation. But I think just overall brand awareness uh, is going to be huge for us. And so I think restaurant.com has a great brand, uh, no doubt about it. We can make some investment in that product, um, in that line of business, and drive more top line revenue with high gross margin. Okay, that's good. And then card cash. It's just an awareness thing at the end of the day, right? It's, it's, you know, it's an 80 plus million dollar revenue business that does not have much exposure. So the second you get out there and you start driving, you know, exposure through social media or whatever avenues we're going to put it through, uh, you're going to start getting a nice return um, on that. And so I think those two things alone, you know, we are now on NASDAQ. Uh, we will start, you know, investing in marketing. That's smart. That drives the top line. And that's where the growth is going to come from. Now, with that growth will come more retailers. Clearly, we have a nice platform. Uh, we could drive business. Uh, we have the numbers. You know, I think there'll be a lot more participation in the programs. And Lydia asks, what percentage of your business is online and digital? And what percentage is physical cards? So 
everything is moving toward digital. Uh, right now, it's about 90% uh, digital, 10% physical. Okay. And Emmett says, thank you for being candid regarding the fact that you could be better known. So what will you spend on a percentage of revenue on marketing to get, get the word out there about your services? Yeah. Uh, don't know yet. Uh, don't feel comfortable answering that. I mean, clearly we're going to spend it in a number of different ways. Uh, wise, of course. Again, the goal here is to become profitable, right? Next year, that's that's my focus. Uh, that's the management team's focus. So we're not going to go crazy. Um, however, we do think there's good returns in certain avenues, and uh, you know we will we will talk about those when we announce uh, you know future earnings. Which, by the way, we got the third quarter coming out here in the end of next week. Just so people know. And Michael asks, is there an advertising model on behalf of the merchants on your platform? Can they advertise specials or other deals? So no, and great question, Michael. I mean, no, there is not. And however, that is something we're eyeing down really hard. We have the users, right? We have the millions and millions of users that are on these platforms. There's no reason why we should not start generating some advertising off these platforms that are meaningful. So that's definitely a growth area that we're looking at. And Stephen wants to know, have you begun to cross sell between card cash and restaurant? And how do you grow this business to what seems should be a 500 million to a billion dollar business? Well, I'm, ex yeah, listen, I'm excited. I went out and bought shares in the open market recently as well. Cause I think these valuations are low and I think the opportunity is extremely high. Um, we're going to, you know, again, advertising is going to promote brand. I have no doubt with the size of the markets that we're dealing with here that we can drive revenue quickly. Um, the advertising, the effectiveness of the marketing is going to drive the top line. How fast we will see. But we are the largest player in this gift card exchange business. And uh, there's a huge market opportunity for us right now to jump on. So I think with awareness, uh, people's knowing that this exists. Um, on top of cross-selling on both sides, right? There's There could be bundle deals, there could be restaurant.com gift cards being sold on cardcash.com. I mean, there's all sorts of growth opportunities around us. Uh, we're executing. And I think you'll you know, you'll see some, some good numbers next week when we report. Wonderful. Harold asks, is there any proprietary technology with the app or business model, or is it just a matter of grabbing the most customers? Now we have all sorts of IP related to fraud fix and the underlying development of how we interchange inventory with gift cards, how they come in, uh, how we digitize them, uh, how we get them out to the consumer, what they're able to use on how they use them on their phones. Uh, we got all sorts of good IP around that. And um, yeah, it's about as comfortable as I want to get into that area. Uh, Zachary asks, do you work in any other spaces other than the service, food, and beverage business? And what other sectors do you serve? We No, we do do service, of course. Uh, gift cards is you know, arguably in many other sectors as far as where it delivers value. Um, but those are the two for right now. So, you know, we talked about M&A opportunities. We talked about expansion through M&A. You know, we'll see where that that leads us. But right now we're focused on integrating you to two businesses and you know trying to grow the top line and get to profitability. And Carl wants you to talk about competition. Uh, who else is in your space and what's your differentiating factor? So the other player that I'm aware of, and again, I'm relatively new, but the other player in this space is a company called Raise. They're a private PE back company or was. Um, uh, I believe. And so uh, they're smaller than us. Um, and uh, we have a lot more robust technology behind, behind our offerings and delivery mechanisms to the consumer. So it's a much more friendly user experience that our consumers get. I think um, I think that's it. We're aware of them. Uh, we you know, talk to them here and there. Um, you know, there's not many players in the space, but uh, that's probably the next one down, which I think is roughly maybe half our size. Wonderful. Well, Steve, do you have any closing remarks for our, our viewers today? No, spread the word. It's all about the word. And so uh, I think the company is uh, in good position to, to grow. I think it's all about awareness. I think uh, the management team's integrating these two businesses together. 
I think uh, this is the you know a good opportunity for investors to uh, take a look at this company and see if there's you know the right value for them to get in. Wonderful. Thank you, Steve, so much for joining us. We look forward to following you along in your journey. So come back with some updates. Thank you. Take care. All right, everyone. We'll be right back with our next presenter.